Hi everyone, my name is um, Adigbe Samson. I am a genomic researcher. I have a background in medical physiology, uh, molecular biology and genomics, as well as human medicine. And I will be sharing with you um, this very interesting stuff. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So um, this is very, very interesting because um, this is the first time um, the GIS will be used to analyze uh, anything genomic uh, data because um, over time people have used uh, the GIS because it's a location called publication data to track um, locations, you know, and and every other thing. But nobody has uh, over the time um, used the potential of um, this tool, the mapping tool, in order to analyze um, the African genome more so the genome um, in, in, in total. So when I mean genome, I am referring to um, the, the total information in, in someone's DNA, okay? So that is what I mean by genome. So uh, every human being is made up of uh, DNA, you know, and the DNA, it's total information in that DNA is what we refer to as the genome. So this is um, our outline, introduction, GIS, with genomic literacy, genomic analysis as well as conclusion. So um, historically, less than 5% of the African genome has recipients. And the lack of democratic value has contributed to the distrust in society. This is one very important, important um, issue around the world of science currently because African genome is believed to be the most diverse genome on earth, okay? And that is why uh, a lot of people are beginning to question, a lot of people are beginning to seek as well as exploit Africa in order to have access to um, the genome. We, we all know the fact that uh, the, the, the COVID, what the COVID did in Africa, what's not as, um, it's not as much of, of impact than what it did in, in, in the global. And, and a lot of people are beginning to question what is an African genome that confers this immunity on Africans, you know, that they were able to um, resist some of these diseases um, over time. So now, these factors and many reasons are why pharmaceutical companies are in so much interested in African gene. And that is why a lot of people are rushing out to have this African genome sequence as, as, as much as, as they can, and then exploiting the Africans where uh, these genomes are gotten from. So like I said earlier, the genome is just like the total information in your DNA. So everybody, if you have a DNA, if you are human, definitely you have a DNA. And if you have a DNA, definitely you have a genome, okay? Because it was passed down to you by the generations before you. So the lack of foundational genomic infrastructure has always put us at, 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 uh, at the rear when it comes to genomic research in Africa. You know, the fact that we don't have foundational genomic infrastructure, the fact that um, there's no regulation when it comes to how this genome is, is extracted and is, 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 is being used has, has put us behind when it comes to genomic research. And this has really prevented um, 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 preventive and precision healthcare in Africa. So genomic data is location data. Just like I started by saying that the genome is, def is the sum total of the information, you know, in your DNA. So hey, that means um, this genomic data is a location data. And that is why uh, we can say 11P6, okay? You are describing a location. And for example, 11P6 is a position on, on your genome, on, on your DNA, okay? So 11 petits, that's the French word for small, six. So 11 chromosome 11, Petit six is the part of your DNA that is involved in that 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 that, that controls uh, a lot of activities. For example, when you have the mutation around the uh, chromosome eleven, position six, definitely the person will come down with sickle cell. Sorry, can you see hear me? I hope I'm not talking to myself. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, great. So, so location, the location, dynamic data is location data, and that is why we can describe. So, position 11, petit 6, or P6, is a position on the DNA that has been studied over time to be involved in um, sickle cell. When you talk about sickle cell, the blood cells become sickle, you know, like a sickle. When, when, um, because a particular protein has been replaced by another one. You say valine replaces glutamine and then you have your blood become sick because that particular um, 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 accident occurs at the position, which is the position 11 of your small hand of um, 
um, chromosome, and a small harm of chromosome 11 at position 6. So leveraging chromosome acquisition within genomic data set and reusing existing head mapping softwares provide entities and individuals, you know, uh, benefits, okay? And it will accelerate genomic research. So just like I started by saying, the fact that we have been exploited, so now the re reusing existing mapping softwares not, not only provide us with acceleration of genomic research, but also give us control because um, um, mapping softwares allow regional control. And, and that is one thing that, uh, that, is, that, that is the direction science is going. The direction where people begin to give permission for how their data is used, you know, how their genomic data is used, and who gets to use it. And they deliberate on what terms, okay? What benefits? Will it be monetarily? If you have access to my genome to produce a drug, are you going to pay me monetarily? Are you going to make the drug accessible to my community? You know, things like that. So what, 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 what we get to see is that um, the, the genome, as large as it is, has components that becomes separate layers. Unlike in the genome, you have genes, okay? Several parts of the genes that, that, that give rise to the chromosome. Chromosomes are about, so far you are a human being, you have about 46 chromosomes. So the three from, from, from the mother's side, the three from the father's side, making it 46, okay? And these points become layers. Um, within the mapping softwares. So, location intelligence, as a, a, a location intelligence enhanced by artificial intelligence can help us analyze genomic data, as well as the environmental data, societal, and societal complexities, and their effect on our health to accelerate our precision medicine in Africa. So, the coordinate system that uh, we've used over time is um, the WGX 1984 Web Mercator Auxiliary Software, I mean, a sphere, and then the map unit is. Um, one DNA base pair to about 10 centimeter. And that, 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 that is um, um, Alice Rajende. So now here is it. The fact that the, G, the, the GIS can be used for genomic literacy and analysis is something that's still relatively new, you know, and it is um, gaining more ground in Africa than any other part of the world. Okay, now from my screen, you can see the, the complete, the, the entire set of the, 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 the genome. So like I said earlier on, I said the genome uh, is made up of chromosomes. Chromosomes, as a human being, a complete human being, you have 23 from father, 23 from mother, which makes 46. So 23, okay? And it's normal from 1 to 22. So the first 1 to 22 is called the autosomes. Then the, uh, the, uh, the, the 23rd becomes the, um, the, the germinal, um, um, uh, uh, germinal uh, chromosome. So now the one, the one to 22, you can see them. We have been able to represent them on the map layer, which is very, very easy to do, okay? But it requires uh, a position where you have to, since you know the chromosome, since you know the, the genome, um, is location data, and it can be converted into points and decimal, decimal points and lines and polygons, you can actually convert it into something like this and then have it represent, represented like this. So now, um, the GIS can be used for genomic literacy as well as analysis. So now, for example, this is um, an information on on, um, on the genome of an individual that was sequenced and we analyzed using um, the GIS tool. You will see that from the person has diabetes, okay? And you can see that there's several spots, spots um, on this map that shows us where uh, there the are mutations. So, we can see from chromosome three, there, there's a spot there involved in diabetes. Chromosome four, there's a spot. Chromosome five, there's nothing. But chromosome six, you can see something. Chromosome eight, chromosome 10, chromosome 14, as well as chromosome 19. You can see diabetic mellitus biomarkers on these positions, okay? Now, what this thing is telling you is the fact that we can use this tool for genomic literacy. So genomic literacy, if, I, if a patient comes to you now, if a patient comes to you and you want to give molecular diagnostics using the GIS tool and you get the person um, genome, genome and it's sequenced, you can convert it into a map layer like this and give the person, the person can interpret it by himself or herself because he can see from this point, he knows that whatsoever is wrong, so if I diabetes mellitus, it, it will be, he would see the points where the diabetes are, diabetes mellitus with is occurring, like chromosome three, chromosome four, chromosome six, and the rest of it there. But again, we can also superimpose um, some, some data from open drug target, as well as Clinver, to look for possible um, a drug and um, 
um, what's the word drugs that may either help or be very fatal if such an individual um, um, takes them. Like for example, you can see the red flag. You can see the superoxide is in phase two. So an individual, this particular individual cannot use this drug, you know, because it's having uh, diabetes mellitus. It can't. You can see again at position 10, the person cannot use uh, the saponamide on position on, on the person cannot use for saponamide because what, what is what is what is telling us is the fact that if the person is having these mutations on these positions on the chromosomes, it then means the person would be affected by this drug because these drugs will this drug will compound the problem rather than solving it, which would translate into genomic literacy as well as helping to analyze um, on the person's health. Again, you will see that um, GIS has been used for rare disease, rare disease, um, rare disease research. This is uh, retinitis pigmentosa. It is a high condition. It is um, inherited, you know. And there are several points that could. There are several points. There are several mutations. The points of mutations that could lead to retinitis pigmentosa. So with the GIS tool, I have been able to combat, make a map, okay, showing a map that if you have a mutation on chromosome on on position um, one probably you have uh, the, the, the particular points, maybe the NNPH4 or the DHDDS, these are points on the chromosomes where um, would accelerate research because uh, people get to know the where, where, where which, which is what GIS does, the where, the where science, which is what GIS does, just to show us where and, and we can concentrate much effort um, to the point where we're having um, um, the problem. So uh, building foundational genomic infrastructure can help Africa become equal partners with the rest of the world, just like I started. You know, the fact that we need tools like this, you know, to help us own what we have, because there's a high demand for what we have outside there. A lot of people want to exploit Africa because we then know that we have a very strong immunity. Why do we have strong immunity? Why do we have things like that? So a lot of people are trying to <laughs> exploit the continent, but I feel, and I know so much that tools like this don't, don't, don't will not just help in, in in analysis alone or, or or literacy alone, but will also help to confer regional control over data. You know where people have the control over their data, so an individual can have his genome sequence and then he keeps it in his house or is being turned into map layers, and if a pharmaceutical company approaches the person and says, "Okay, we want to have insight into your genome." Okay, you could decide what the goal in between will be. Would they pay you? Would they what would they give you in return? Would they have to come to your, your, your community and develop it? So what will be the return at the end of the day? So I think that is what the tool will help us to do. And because the genomic data is location data, and with the use of mapping software, we can accelerate genomic research in Africa because we can know the particular points where these mutations are through the help of the, the where, you know, the location science. The where in, in, in the GIS um, um, science there, which which will confer confer on us um, most benefit of accelerating in biomedical research in Africa. Uh, we are still behind when it comes to research in Africa. Uh, when we look at um, rare diseases, like um, we know that we have sickle cell. I think Africa is in this, is, is the continent with the most abundant amount of people living with um, 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 sickle cell. You know, but okay. but a lot has not been done over the years because we depend on people coming out, coming in to take this data and taking it outside there. But now we have a tool, the GIS tool, that can help us um, analyze, help us control, as well as help us um, to be more literate when it comes to um, um, the, the genome and, and the function.